Hello everyone, it's good to see you back. Today's prismatic build will be focused on the hunter, but not just any hunter prismatic build. A very unique and fun build that can be taken into endgame if you like to use Radiant Dance Machine and Manticore. Now did you know that if you have RDM, Ascension, a facet of Purpose and Hope all tied together, you can infinitely chain your Ascension effect as long as you like? You may think, yeah, of course we knew that. But I bet you haven't thought about adding Manticore as well for the build. Because if not, you're missing out on a ton of benefits that vary from infinite class speed to recharge, fast grenade recharge, increased damage and damage reduction, easy to navigate setup, and quite honestly, a great quality of life build that can be updated however you like. Let's take a small break with doing meta builds and let's do something more fun, shall we? Let's start with the exotic of the build and general aim. Our aim is to make sure our key class ability is always active and available at the moment's notice. We also need to make sure we are actively creating the right conditions to support the build overall effect for long periods. For this, we will be using Mandicore with Catalyst and Radiant Dance Machine as the two key exotics. Let's start with Mandicore with his exotic trait, Soaring Fang, states, A dealing damage while grounded charges anti-grav repulsors. Dealing damage while airborne extends anti-grav repulsors. Using the alternative weapon action to disengage anti-grav repulsors. Basically, this perk along with the Swooping Talon effect will allow us to hover in the air once we have activated its given effect, and from there it will get a damage boost while staying in the air as well. Having a catalyst is a must for the weapon, as getting kills while hovering will grant you an overshield as well, so the risk factor of being in the air for long will be paid off via the catalyst and weapon perk alone. Our second exotic is the Radiant Dance Machine with its exotic perk, The Dance, which states, Activating your dodge ability while near targets allows you to dodge additional times for a short period. Defeating targets extends the duration of additional dodge. Now this perk will affect how fast we can get our class ability back as long as we activate it within its requirements. This here with faster purpose and hope is going to ultimately be the requirements needed to retain this key area for as long as possible. We do have a weapon perk combo to also help with fast class ability also but of course this will be all debatable. For aspects of fragments, we have the following. Gunpowder Gamble, while getting the ability kills, elemental debuffs, or solo weapon kills, will charge up an improvised explosive. Ascension, where while in the air, consume your class ability energy to summon your arc staff, propelling you upwards and creating a burst of energy that amplifies allies and jolt enemies. A facet of dominance, where your void grenades weaken targets and your arc grenades jolt them. A facet of protection, where while surrounded by combatants, you are more resistant to incoming damage. A facet of bravery, where defeating targets with grenade final blows grants volatile rounds to void weapons. Defeating targets with powered melee kills grant unraveling to strand weapons. A facet of awakening, where rapidly defeating targets with light or darkness damage or super final blows generates an elemental pickup of the matching damage type. A facet of hope, where while having an elemental buff, your class speedy recharges faster. And a facet of purpose where clicking an orb of power grants a wide number of personal buffs. So as we have covered that Radiant Dance Machine just needs facet of hope and purpose to keep the aspect going, the rest of the fragments can be amendable if you desire something else. I highly recommend you keep facet of protection for that extra damage reduction that you will need, while facet of bravery and dominance are two fragments that will heavily increase our personal damage. This does leave you with Facet Awakening, which I would recommend you keep, since the Hope Fragment can trigger off any personal self-applied buff. However, since we can become amplified quite easily, it will then go down to personal usage and how often you tend to use Ascension within the build. For the modern stats, we have both resilience and Discipline marked as our top priority, with Mobility and Recovery also supporting their parts. Both Recovery and Mobility can both stay at Tier 4 up to 5, as you have other ways of getting them buffed up via our fragments alone. Resilience, we have ours at tier 8 for a 24% damage reduction. No key mods are needed for this area, as having faster protection will fill in the missing gap for not being tier 10, and that should honestly be everything you need for the stat. Discipline, we have ours at tier 10 for a 53 second cooldown via magnetic grenades. As our magnetic grenades will be able to debuff targets via our fragments, we can use this to escalate our damage further once our improvised explosives are charged, and then combine this into our prismatic state once active. 
I highly recommend you have the following, as it will allow us to use this in Endgame if we wish a lot more. Grenade Kickstart for a 16.2% to a 45% buff, Bomber for a 12% buff, and Distribution times 2 for a 6% all ability buff. Additional mods which are highly recommended, we have the following. Void Siphon for creating orbs of power, Charged Up times 1 for a plus 1 armor stacks we carry, Elemental Charge where clicking Elemental Buffs will grant you a stack of armor charge, Dynamo for a 2.5% super energy regen, and lastly, Heavy Reserves and Scavenger Ammo Mods for a heavy weapon. As we have covered our exotic primary weapon, I would then advise you to pick a super weapon for the build. These are all optional, but do hold some benefit towards the build. Having a new Lost Signal Grenade Launcher with Wellspring and Strategist is going to be a strong recommendation if you want to support your class ability a lot. Although we have ours covered pretty good from our selection of mods, I would highly advise you look into having something like this on spare in case you can increase your class ability further on your end, or if you want to try to build out without relying on certain fragments to achieve this. Heavy, we have the Commemoration, which is just an all-round great heavy machine gun to own. With redirection and reconstruction on it, you can fire this weapon for a very long time while also using the kills to further buff your damage. It's recommended you do have a machine gun on, as the build is quite mobile, but also if your primary fails to put on a dent in the most tougher enemies, you can then easily move up to the next best thing, aka machine guns. Now if you have ever wanted to identify as an attack helicopter and not rely on warlocks to do so, then now you have the chance to do so with this fun and rather crazy build. Being able to proc ascension as many times as you like, and then combo this into Manticore Hover Effect is not only cool to do all in one, but it poses a number of benefits that greatly benefit us, such as increased damage resistance, increased damage, fast ability recharge, increased mobility, and versatile setup. And this is a first for the Hunter class, as the only class that could make full use of Manticore's effect while in the air would be the Warlocks. The Warlock would also benefit greatly from giving exotics that focus on staying in the air for long, so to see this be switched around for the Hunters, the Master, shows Bungie is willing to experiment more with specific class setups and benefits. It's quite a good build, even when being used in endgame, as you can freely utilise your abilities whenever you feel like it, and the range of your abilities are also quite wide, so you can get pretty far with using it in most endgame content. Of course, staying in the air for too long does pose as many risks towards players who don't generally read the room before actioning. On top of that, using this sort of build in GMs or mass content will see you get killed more often than other difficulties if you rely on Manticore and Ascension effects a bit too much. Basically, as long as you read the room first with knowing where the enemies are located, the build can work out really well and pretty fine wherever you go. You just need to play it safe, like always. And if you do that right, you can then see the true power of such a build over time. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared, then please leave a comment below. While well, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and a sub while here. The dim link for the build is located below in the pinned section, and I do advise you check out my playlist for more additional content. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.